Hey everybody, Jonathan Thorpe here from jthorpephoto.com. Uh, pretty exciting day. Well, actually yesterday I received a package from my lighting sponsor, Westcott. Um, before I get into what is in this lovely, lovely box, uh, if you follow my career, you know already that I am a lighting guy. Uh, I will drag strobes uh, to the most inconvenient of places just so I can get the shot that I uh, envision, the shot that I plan for, and usually that involves a multitude of, of strobes. Um, currently I'm shooting with four of the FJ400 strobes that you see right here. Uh, and I've used a ton of, of different strobes in my career. Uh, you know, entry level stuff, all the way up to pro stuff, whatever you want to call it. And the Westcott stuff is just crushing it. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, ecosystem of lights. Uh, you see I have the, uh, the trigger here. This is the FJX2M. Uh, the cool thing about this trigger that I'm sure a lot of you already know is that it can be used for pretty much any camera uh, manufacturer out there. Canon, Sony, Nikon, Panasonic, um, I think Fuji, yeah, Fuji and uh, Olympus. I think they're all, you can use it with all of those uh, manufacturers, which is a really, really, um, interesting and cool thing, especially if you're teaching and you want to teach strobe and you want to teach how to light and stuff like that, you can then hand your trigger off to a student and say, hey, now you can take the same photo I just took. Um, if you have a Nikon or whatever, I shoot with a Canon system. I have a, the Canon R5 here and I'm recording this on a Canon R6 and this works uh, completely fine for both of them. So with, with the Westcott strobes, uh, it's a 400 watt strobe, uh, high speed sync, all the bells and whistles you could ever expect. Also some cool, like, uh, I guess, Westcott specific uh, features as well. So when I had heard that they announced that they were gonna uh, branch out into a true uh, ecosystem of lights, you know, I couldn't be more excited because, you know, being able to have the one brand across the entire board is just an easier thing to handle as a photographer. If you're gonna, uh, let's, I don't shoot weddings, but let's talk about weddings, you know, maybe for an instance. Uh, they have an, an FJ, an FJ80 and a FJ200 and now the 400. Um, the 80 is a speed light situation that will, can mount on your hot shoe as well as be a, a wireless flash. Uh, but that will also talk to the 200, which will also talk to the 400. So they all talk to each other and also they'll all talk to each other through this trigger. So now the, the lighting options are just limitless as far as whatever you need. Now, I have not handled <laughs> this new strobe. I've only seen pictures of it, um, and I'm very, you know, excited to to get inside this box. What is inside this is the new uh, FJ200, the 200 watt strobe. And like I said, I haven't seen this or held it. I don't really know what to expect. I've only seen the renderings that are out there and the product shots, um, but they sent this to me pretty quickly so I could take a look at it. And I'll talk about why, uh, a little bit why a 200 watt strobe is as important, if not more important than a 400 watt. Typically when it comes to lighting, you wanna say, you know, get the brightest light you can get because you can always dial it down. Um, you can never make it be brighter than, than what it already is. But if you're a, a, a strobe user that uses a lot of different lights at one time, um, having something that's a little bit lower powered than your, your mains can be a really, really cool thing. And I'll talk, I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. So let's get into this. Um, I had to, I got this yesterday at like one o'clock and I had to sit here and wait because I had to shoot yesterday. And I didn't want to do the, the fake thing of like unboxing it and then like re-taping it up or something. So it looks like I didn't unbox it. So when I made this video, it would be like fresh. Uh, so I waited and it was really difficult to wait. Um, but here we are. So. Go ahead and get this open. I'll put this on the couch here. All right. Westcott FJ200. Let's see if that's going to focus on it or not. Really cool. So, right off the bat, and this is probably to be expected. It's small. It's gonna be a small, compact strobe. Awesome for travel, 
awesome for event work if you're trying to just light up an event venue or whatnot. Um, but also, you know, good for everything you're going to do as a, as a strobe photographer. Uh, get into this. As expected, it comes with its own little carry bag, which is always something cool that Westcott does. If you get the FJ400, um, you'll see that it comes in a case similar to something like this. Or if you get the two light system, it comes in a really, really cool backpack, which is what I have. I have two of those backpacks with uh, two heads in each, in each bag. Um, so that's our little travel bag here. And honestly, like <laughs> this could fit in a carry-on like super, super easy. And honestly, you could probably just walk on with this, you know, was it on airlines? It's like the two bag limit, but I've always carried like two bags and like one of these little bags or something. They don't, don't care. So for travel shooting, for travel photography, this is pretty awesome so far. Quick start guide, USB-C for uh, firmware updates. Charging cable for the charger. Is that the battery? Holy crap. Sorry. <laughs> Just look how the size of this battery. That is so tiny. And if you compare it to like how big this one is back here, like that's, that's, that's amazing. Got a little reflector. It's a little guy. And I don't know how to do this thing. Hold on. Oh, so grid pops off and it snaps on for a grid. That's really cool. Charger, let me get rid of this stuff here. Uh, oh, is this, I guess the, the bracket to mount it to a light stand, I think. I think that's what that is. Like I said, this is all new. Oh, this is unreal how small this is. Look at this thing. This is insane. Look at that. That's a 200 watt strobe, you guys. That's insane. And yeah, this is to mount uh, the light stand adapter. So we'll do that really quick. There we go. And now we can mount it, you know, any way we want. Now, how do I release the, oh, there's a button there. Takes the cap off. A little flash tube in there. Right? So this is using a different mount. So they typically use the Bowens mount um, for their, their flashes. Um, and I, I don't know if this is the case or not, but they probably are gonna have some type of adapter uh, from this. It's a four pin. I don't know if you can see that clearly enough. I'll turn it to the side a little bit. So there's four pins on this and four in there as opposed to the Bowens, which is a, a three mount pin. But I assume there'll be some type of adapter uh, to do that but in the meantime you can still use an umbrella it has a little umbrella mount that goes through there um, and whatnot taking a look at the back nice little lcd screen let me do this hold on a second this is let me see if i can get this in the mic everyone likes this the plastic pull now i ripped it <laughs> i'll get that off later um nice little lcd let's pop the battery in let's see if i can figure this out let's say it just goes in there's a is that it? There we go. There's a little release mechanism right there. I guess you pull that up and that pops the battery out. So you can just pop that back in. Um, all right, let's turn it on. Hopefully it's charged and it is. All right, so I'll try to do a zoom in on that. So you can see it a little bit better, but that's our LCD. Um, and you can see power changing right there. Uh, again, I'm learning all this at once. There's our modeling light, which is something I've always noticed about uh, the Westcott stuff is just how bright the modeling lights are. Uh, I want to turn off, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Really quick, I'm going to turn off the beep because that always bugs the crap out of me. There we go. 
Um, back to what I was saying, the modeling lights on these are always very, very bright. You can see it on my face, that's a nice light. There we go there. And you can always, you can still power it down and power it up. So for video stuff, it's actually not a bad light. The battery life on these is really, really great, at least on the 400s. And I've heard wonderful things about the 200s. Um, but that's a, that's a good little output of light. It really, really is. Um, let's go ahead and just make sure that this is working. So I'm gonna turn on the trigger here. Uh, now, I gotta set my channel to the correct channel to match my, my trigger. For some reason, I keep my channel on channel nine. I never really, I don't have a rhyme or reason for that. Um, but we're gonna put this to channel nine. And then we'll come back out of the menu. I think that's how we do it here. Yep. And we're in group A. And I might have to sync these up because I don't know if it's gonna talk to each other immediately. Yeah, I think I gotta sync them up. Oh, no, we're good. Never mind. it was working. So you'll see, and I'll try to do the down on this. You can see how it's talking to each other there. Okay. And we'll do a test. Boom, boom. Just for do I have a memory card in this. No, I don't have a memory card. That's okay. Um, but yeah, seems to be flashing just fine. And just, you know, for continuity, let's turn this on as well. So in my strobes, my 200 watt is now uh, group A. Uh, I'm gonna change this to I don't know, group B just so it's a little bit different. You'll see that's at 3.4. If you can read that correctly from here. I'm gonna turn that down, make sure that we're not, I'm not too bright on my face. And we'll go to group A. So I'm gonna have this flash around my face and this is gonna to flash toward the camera. Let me make sure they're both talking to each other, right? Three, two, one. I think that's good. Yep, they're both talking to each other just fine. So that's really cool. Let's go ahead and turn this off. And we'll get back to this. So again, a little charger. Uh, going back to the strobe, um, looking at the back, it does have high speed sync enabled. Uh, going through the menus, mode, manual TTL, of course, sync, high-speed sync, or normal shutter, it looks like. Um, let's see what happens if I put it in normal. I think we might get a bigger pop of power here. All right, I'm going to turn it up to f near full power. This is at nine. And that's full power, guys. So that's a really quick recycle time for full power pops. One, one, about a second, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little, tiny bit more, somewhere in that one second range, which is great. Like for a full power pop, that's kind of unheard of, I think, outside of the really, 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 really expensive stuff that, you know, whatever. But let's go down to like low, low power and see how it's set in there. So it goes down, it doesn't go down, there we go. Yeah, less than a second all day long. No problem there. Uh, diving back into the menus here. We have our channels and our groups, wireless, TTL, all client, I don't know what client means. Beep off, screen, uh, auto off and turn so it turns itself off, of course. Screen, change the brightness of the screen. That's pretty much it. There's not too much to the menu, as there probably shouldn't be. Uh, but really, really cool little guy. So I talked a little bit about in the beginning, like, you know, why do you want, let's just slap this on there for now. And I assume this comes off. It looks like it snaps off. I don't want to break it, but I feel like, oh, there we go. So it looks like, okay, <laughs> sorry, I'm learning this at the same time you guys are. Let me turn this off. So that ring comes down, which I assume will then kind of release whatever attachment you want to put in here. Yeah, so that releases the grids and there's likely a multitude of grids that will fit in this. So 
that pops into the ring. It kind of snaps into place, it feels like. There we go, and then this ring closes. And that locks it in. It's a magnetic lock, it looks like. And that goes on the little guy there. Cool, cool little grid system. Grids are really important, especially in the type of work that I do. And actually, especially for uh, this strobe. And I'll go into that now about why it's nice to have a lower powered strobe. So when you do as much on location lighting and environmental portraiture that I do, uh, it's really, really, really important to also understand how to light your environment uh, as a, in addition to lighting your subject. Uh, typically I'm using three to four strobes on a, on, a, on a single portrait. It's two from the side, uh, one boomed above, and typically one that's going to light up the environment. So now having five, that's going to free me up to use four strobes on that portrait, on that person, and then one as a, we'll call it an environmental light. And having something that's lower powered that I can really, 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 really dial down so I don't blow out walls or blow out locations like that is really, really important because now I can create even a darker, more moody scene uh, or even a brighter scene because I can go all the way up to 200 watt. Um, but I can create this, this mo emotion and this mood in the shot by using something that's a little bit lower powered and I can just then, you know, keep light focused to one small area as, a as opposed to letting you just like fill a room with a bunch of really, really overpowered light. This is also going to be a great fill light for my portraiture. Uh, going back to the Sam in the studio or, or you know, if I don't really need to light the environment that much differently from the subject, I can even use five lights on my, my portrait and that's going to be two rim lights. That's going to be uh, a boomed, typically a bo boomed beauty dish overhead. That's going to be a big fill umbrella behind me. And now I have something like uh, for a background hair light that will just hit the back of the head a little bit and just really kind of sculpt that person out of a ton of light. So there's a lot of cool benefits to using a, a 200 watt strobe if you're going to mix it in with a, a more powerful uh, strobe system. But if you're not mixing it in and you're just using these, uh, you're going to be golden because this is plenty of power. You know, it's really rare that I'm shooting at a full uh, full power on a strobe on a shoot. I'm usually around a half to three quarters. So these will all kind of work together really, really easily without too much uh, loss of power in between, the, in, in between the two of them. This at near full, which is still a one, less than a one second recycle time, and this at a half power is roughly the same. So I still have a lot of, of power between my strobes to still work together in a, in a, in a useful way. Uh, I think that's about it though. This is a really, I can't believe how small it is. It's blowing my mind. Sorry about that quick pause. My camera battery died. I thought it was fully charged because I wasn't. But anyway, going back to what I was talking about. Uh, you know, I grew up shooting with really, really big studio lights. Um, I think my first set of, of true strobes were the old white lightnings, which if you guys don't know, were really big, heavy metal units. They were, I was using, God, I think I was using a, a 1200 watt, which was, you know, pretty much this long and then this big around and weighed like five or eight pounds. It was really, really heavy. Uh, if you wanted to use it outside, you needed a ton of sandbags with any modifier because it was going to knock over. And the capacitors always blew up in them and like, it was just kind of crude. It was just light, you know? Um, and to see how technology has gone to something like this, where it's like the size of like a water bottle almost, and you're still getting so much power out of this little guy, is kind of crazy to me. Um, it's really, really exciting. Uh, Westcott is doing some really, really exciting, uh, cool things uh, with strobe and with modifiers. They've, they've been in the modifier business for like 30 years now. And they've always made stuff that is really, really great. And this is just super, super cool. It's really exciting. It really is. Like, if I was newer to, to strobe photography, like, getting a bag of these, like having four of these in a bag, which, God, these will fit. These will fit in your camera bag for sure. You can probably get two or threes in a camera bag. Um, is pretty incredible. 
and still have plenty of power and still be able to do high speed sync and all that is just, it's remarkable. It really, really is. Um, I can't wait to do a shoot with this. I'm gonna try to do one here very, very soon because uh, I really wanna see how it performs out in the field. Uh, I'm a little demanding on my equipment. Um, so it's always kind of exciting to see just what it can handle. The FJ400s have held up incredible. Um, and I do, I'm not, I'm not very uh, safe to say the least. Uh, with my equipment, it's it's tools, it's equipment, so I, I I I treat it kind of as such. And this thing has I've had this drop off a light stand, I've had it hit the ground really hard. It's just one of those things that happens in, when you're shooting so often. Uh, you just deal with it, and this is held up beautifully. And I don't think there's going to be an issue with this holding up either. Um, Okay, that should be about it for today, everyone. If you have any questions, please feel free to hit me up either here or shoot me uh, an email, info at jthorpephoto.com. Instagram is also jthorpephoto. Twitter, all that stuff, it's all the same. And I'll be happy to share my, my other views of this once I put it through its paces. Like I said, it's a really, really exciting time in photography. There's so many new products coming out. Uh, the technology is just getting better and better and better and it's really really cool um, and I think I got the plastic off of this which is really exciting for me because that would just bug me all day <laughs> um, but again reach out to me can we do a shoot with this and I'm gonna I'll likely post a, a little BTS shoot with this and we can see just how it performs as opposed to just an unboxing thing but that should be it you guys hope you guys have a great day Hope your 2021 is off to a, 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 let's just say decent start at this point. I don't think we can ask for any more considering how the year has been. Uh, and again, hit me up if you have any questions. Thanks so much.